Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's public forum in the Council Chambers for Monday, the 28th of March, 2022. This public forum is being audio recorded for administrative purposes. By speaking at the public forum, you agree to being recorded. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this public forum that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this public forum. Item number Two, conflict of interest declarations received by the chair. There are none. Item three, guest speakers. 3.1, Mr. Bruce Key. That is in relation to a notice of motion, climate emergency recognition. He's speaking in support of council's preferred recommendation. Mr. Key. Mayor King, councillors, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to speak uh, to you on behalf of WATCH. Uh, and you'll note that our acronym WATCH requires Wodonga to be in front of Aubrey, so I'm sorry about that. Now, I know a young girl called Jasmine who was a happy, effervescent person until she started university to study sustainability. And that exposed her to the terrible truths about climate change. Sadly, Jasmine is now on treatment and medication for depression. On a more positive note, as a member of Council's Sustainability Advisory Committee, I've been very impressed at all the things that Council is doing in relation to sustainability and mitigating climate change. Great work, Aubrey. I hope you're going to keep it up. When Watch began 15 years ago, it was the only climate action group in the area. Today, there are 10 other groups uh, representing a diverse cross-section of our community from school strike for climate to knitting nanas for renewables. And quite a few representatives here tonight. Now, our community is concerned about climate change. A recent poll in the Border Mail on the 28th of February canvassed 7,200 respondents and 45% said that the environment and climate change was their number one concern. Other polls show that between 60 and 70% of the population want more action on reducing emissions despite any costs that may be involved. That suggests that passing this motion tonight will be popular with most of the community. Now, the question is, do we really have a climate emergency? The Earth's temperature is going up due to greenhouse gases. The problem with that is that higher temperatures increase the chance that the Earth will pass a tipping point. A tipping point is where the temperature accelerates of its own accord. Now, a possible example would be where warming thaws vast areas of permafrost across Siberia, Scandinavia, and Canada. When you thaw permafrost, you get methane released. When the methane, methane is a greenhouse gas, 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So you've got all that extra greenhouse gas, which creates more warming, which releases more methane, which creates more warming and so on in a vicious cycle. And once that happens, nothing humans can do will stop it. That is the problem. That would lead to widespread problems with food, water, mass migrations and civil unrest. It's no wonder that my young friend Jasmine is depressed contemplating such a possibility. Tipping points have to be avoided at all costs, hence the term climate emergency. Now, climate change impacts are already being seen in Albury area, including floods, bushfires, droughts, 
debris slips down hillsides and blue-green algae outbreaks. It's affecting councils, and so they need to be part of the solution. Now, you will not be the only New South Wales Council to declare a climate emergency, assuming you do it, declare one. 37 other councils across New South Wales have already done so. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. You can look at what other similar councils, such as Armadale, are doing. Now, the urgency is such that every organisation and every person needs to be involved in a war on climate change. And the irony in that war is that many of the actions that are effective don't cost money. They are actually net positive. You save money. And some examples are energy efficiency, renewable energy, electric cars, good building design, good insulation, changing, changing lights to LEDs and tree planting. As you make your decision tonight on this important issue of a climate emergency, please consider my young friend, Jasmine, and all the young people in your lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Key. Councillors, any questions for Mr. Key following that um, submission at all? <laughs> That's fine, thank you. Was it? Our next speaker is Mr. Lockie Carpenter, also our recently elected youth mayor. Congratulations, Lockie. And he is speaking in relation to the notice of motion, climate emergency recognition, speaking in support of council's preferred recommendation. Thank you, Lockie, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, good evening, councillors. I'm presenting this endorsement on behalf of the Albury Youth Council regarding the intended motion of climate emergency recognition. Without a doubt, climate change will be a significant challenge which will affect many aspects of our local community. And therefore, immediate and persistent action is required to mitigate long-term effects and support versatility in the face of an altering eco space. In 2021, the Albury Youth Survey uh, identified a clear message in the perspective of local young people. Over half of our 700 plus respondents stated that climate action was very important and a further quarter stated it was somewhat important. With the urgency of time and the reality of future responsibilities, it is no surprise that young people have caught on all levels of government and the private sector to create greater impact in overcoming the many issues that stand before us. It is recognised that Council and Albury City have achieved notable progress in improving operations and supporting area-wide development. These initiatives include the Albury City Waste Management Centre, and the phasing out of single use plastic within the council. However, further effort and consistent review will allow for the best outcomes to be realized. Outcomes which will not only affect us right now, but in 20, 50 and 100 years potentially in the future. Therefore, the Youth Council commends Councillor Edwards motion and urges the Albury City Council to approve, so as to build upon the existing commitments in relation to climate change, sustainability and prolonged development. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Youth Mayor Carpenter. <laughs> Any questions after that? Thank you. Our next speaker is um, Mr. Andrew Boyd Barber. He's speaking in relation to the aquatic strategy update, speaking in support of an alternative recommendation. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, good evening. Thank you, Mayor, um, for the opportunity to speak. Firstly, I want to congratulate the councillors on your election and wish you all the best in what is a difficult and often thankless task. I'm speaking to the agenda item CM 13.9, Aquatic Strategy Update. I'm encouraging councillors tonight to support option 2.3 or something similar to undertake a comprehensive review of the aquatic strategy, exploring current and alternate locations, noting that this is not the recommended option by staff. I am encouraging a back to the drawing board approach for th three key reasons. One, the 2016-2017 process and strategy has some flaws. Two, the city has changed. And three, there are new strategies, documents, master plans and partnerships that just did not exist in 2016. Fundamentally, and this was the main thrust of my <laughs> lengthy submissions on the matter in 2016, a new aquatic facility can be so much more than just a pool. This is a huge community well-being and financial investment. It creates a massive opportunity to achieve compounding benefits if done right. 
Unfortunately, in my view, the efforts in 2016, 2017 did not seek to explore these wider benefits. Sure, an aquatic facility at Lauren Jackson will deliver good aquatic facilities. However, it does little more than that. An aquatic facility in the right location could help to regenerate a struggling Lavington CBD. It could turbocharge inner city apartment living. It could kickstart a new centre out at Thaguna. It could deliver facilities to parts of town which currently have none. It could integrate within smaller sporting codes who have historically lacked good facilities such as hockey. An aquatic facility in the right location could key into public transport network, ensuring that the pool is only one bus ride away from every part of Albury and Wodonga, rather than needing to change buses and pay for two fares, as is the case with Lauren Jackson. In the right location, an aquatic facility could form part of a natural environment, creating synergies with our gorgeous waterways, helping to create an image of Albury that we could sell around the, re around the country. Lauren Jackson Stadium does none of these things. It places the facility in a light industrial area and seems to have scored high, highly in the past, purely for the fact that there is space for car parking. The 2016 assessment provided no criteria for proximity to bus routes, major cycleways or pedestrian connectivity. It did, however, score access to the motorway, giving Lauren Jackson a seven and Aubrey Pool a two out of 10, despite there being a negligible difference in the distance from an off-ramp. There was no scoring system for wider urban benefits. It was fundamentally and strategically flawed. Since 2016, the city has changed. Populations have increased. There are more apartments, more tree changes, more retirees. Since the report was written, the NDIS has become a thing. And yet still Aubrey has no hydrotherapy pool. We have a far greater understanding of climate change and the need to consider sustainability more holistically in every decision. That means more than solar panels on the roof. It means looking at the carbon footprint of how people get to these sorts of facilities. In 2016, Two Cities, One Community didn't exist, and the potential for Donga to be a Commonwealth Games venue and village was not even contemplated. Right now, Transport for New South Wales is consulting on bus improvements, and I know Council has an integrated transport strategy on the way. Right now, Council is developing a housing strategy which in part asks what facilities and amenities are needed to support high density living. Council is also looking at CBD master plan refreshes this year and the city deal kind of exists. All of these strategies and partnerships should influence what an aquatic, where an aquatic facility goes, who funds it and how we can ensure that it fits within everything else. We must also consider those most vulnerable to ensure that the facility is equitable. Children, the aging, People with disabilities, how will they get there? What will their experience be? How much joy will it bring to those whose only option for exercise and physiotherapy is warm water? I know people who are moving away from Albury because there is no hydrotherapy pool, moving away from family because they need reliable warm water for their health and well-being. So to summarise, I'm encouraging you tonight to go back to the drawing board and, and for three key reasons. One, the previous process and strategy has some flaws. Two, the city has changed. And three, we need a strategic, we need to like work this in with new strategies and documents and partnerships. This is a big decision for you. It's a lot of money, but we need to get value out of it and get it right. So take some time, not too much, uh, and put those most vulnerable front of mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, Andrew. Um, can you confirm, have you uh, participated in the current New South Wales government transport uh, about buses uh, within Albury Wodonga? And have you fed what you have told us tonight about the buses <laughs> uh, into that as part of your response or? Uh, yeah, I believe the submissions for buses close tomorrow. Um, so I haven't yet sent my submission through waiting on some more additional information, but that does sort of form part of it all, yes. Okay, so that's part of what you're going to be putting in. Okay, and through you, um, Madam um, Mayor King, uh, through you uh, to the most relevant member of staff, uh, hydrotherapy is a, an issue that has been raised. Uh, can I confirm before we uh, we'll deal with this later this evening, um, that we have absolutely included, and my understanding is we have, it's 
um, articulated in, in, in the numerous reports that we have available to us from council. But can I again have a uh, com confirmation from our staff that hydrotherapy is clearly one of those key components uh, for any uh, possible aquatics facility in Albury. Mr Glass. Um, thank you. Yes, hydrotherapy is a consideration. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Have another question, Councillor Bowen. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Boyd Barber. I thought it was uh, uh, excellent to hear your views. Have you got a view at this stage of where you feel would be a great place for an <laughs> uh, Yes, of course I do. Um, but I think the point the point is more that the, the that decision making process I think needs to be much more um, transparent and um, robust. So. Uh, I think I'd be more encouraging of um, of going back and canvassing those views much more wider. Okay, thank you. There are no further questions or comments. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I believe that concludes our public forum. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the council meeting being held in the council chambers for Monday, March 22. We will start off uh, CM1 with the opening prayer and acknowledgement of original custodians of our land. I'll call on Councillor Bowen to do that for us this evening. Thank you, Mayor King, on this 28th day of March. We gather to represent the people of Albury who have entrusted us with this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, wisdom, and common sense. May our personal values give us honesty and courage to serve our community effectively with respect for all. I'd now like to acknowledge our original custodians of the land. I'd like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet upon here today and pay my respects to the elders past, present, and future, for they hold the memories, culture, tradition, and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that contribute to our society. This council meeting is being webcast and recorded. By speaking at the council meeting, you agree to being recorded and webcast. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this council meeting that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this council meeting. An audio recording will be made for administrative purposes. Item three, conflict of interest declarations received and disclosure of political donations. Mr. CEO. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. Um, we've received one conflict of interest declaration from Councillor Edwards, a non-pecuniary significant conflict of interest. A brief description of the conflict is review is funded in part by Heritage New South Wales, Councillor Edwards place of employment. Um, the item relates to um, CM 13.1 Heritage Review. The action that Councillor Edwards intends to take is to declare an interest, remain in the chamber and abstain from voting. That is all in terms of uh, conflict of interest declarations received. In terms of disclosures of political donations and the requirements of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act, the advice to Council under section 10.4 is that um, requires uh, this act requires a person submitting planning applications or submissions regarding a planning application to disclose any reportable political donation and or gifts to any local councillor or employee of council. Reportable political donations 
include those of or above $1,000. The disclosure statement forms are available on council's website. In dealing with development applications, councillors need to take into account specific planning matters contained in the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act. Accordingly, the provisions of section 4.151 of that act are set out in the council officer's report detailing planning issues to be considered. Uh, that's all for this evening. Thank you, Mayor King. Thank you very much. Item four, apologies. There are none. However, just noting that Councillor Betridge will be leaving early and Councillor Cameron joins us on Zoom. Good evening, Councillor Cameron. CM5, mayoral minute. There is no mayoral minute. CM6, action plans. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move that the following action plans be received and noted. Actions complete and noting only. Actions awaiting response from external parties. Actions in progress and long-term issues more than three months. Councillor Bowen. I'd like to second that motion from Councillor Thurley. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to open debate? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Fairly routine matter. Any debate questions, councillors? If not, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you. CM7, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. So CM 7.1, minutes of the council meeting held on Monday, the 14th of March, 2022 at 6 p.m. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the minutes of the Council meeting held on Monday, the 14th of March at 2022 at 6 pm be confirmed. Councillor Petridge. Happy to second that, Mayor King. Councillor Thurley, no, you wish to speak to it? If there are no questions or debate, um, councillors, we're happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM8 reports from community forums. There are none. CM9, notices of motion, notices of rescission. CM9.1, notice of motion, climate emergency recognition. And Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council recognises, oh, sorry, that Council A recognises that we are in a state of climate emergency that requires urgent action by all levels of government, including local council, to mitigate against the adverse effects of climate change. B acknowledges the significant action already taken by Aubrey City and the community towards decreasing emissions and carbon footprint to date. C, works with the community to facilitate and support the establishment of a community net zero emission target, including education and possible tangible assistance. D, reviews council's current net zero emissions targets with input from the Albury City Sustainability Advisory Committee, youth council, community organisations and residents. E, articulates the agreed community and council targets in Albury 2050. F, develops Climate, a climate action plan as part of the proposed Aubrey City Sustainability Framework that sets out how Council will achieve the Council emission targets and how Council will support the community to achieve their emissions targets by 12 December 2022. And G informs the member for Aubrey and the member for Farah of this resolution and requests that they continue to advocate for strong climate action at state and federal government level and engages with them directly to immediately identify opportunities for partnerships with both council and residents. Councillor Callaghan. I'd like to second the motion making. Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, please, making. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge and thank all my fellow councillors for their input into this motion, particularly councillors Baker, Callaghan and Thurley, who share my passion on this issue. I'd also like to acknowledge that the importance of climate action was rated four or five out of five in a 2021 survey by participating councillors in this chamber. Through this motion, we recognise that climate change poses a serious risk to life as we know it, and that current actions being implemented are not enough to limit human-induced climatic changes. 
Climate change is no longer an abstract concept. It's here in Australia, it's here in our region, and it's here in Albury with extreme weather, including very hot days, fire, flood, and as we saw recently, storms. The recent storm and flooding events significantly impacted our community, putting a strain on council infrastructure and staff resources with over 2,000 requests for assistance and some remain outstanding. Multiple one in 100 year storm and flooding events in the period of a month are not normal or business as usual. Our own audit and risk committee recently identified climate change as an emerging risk to council, particularly relevant to bushfire management, including rain increasing growth and fuel load. Council has done great work on climate action to date, and I'd like to thank council staff and the previous council, including those returning councillors who are with us here today. Council has been taking strong and effective climate action in response to climate change for many years now, including raising community awareness, development of climate change adaptation plan, council emission reduction targets, and work on the transition to renewable power and an electric fleet, but we can do more. As we heard earlier from Mr. Keyes, the scientific data points, uh, paints a bleak picture if urgent and effective action isn't taken. Clear council and community emission reduction targets are required to address this emergency. We do have council targets, but these are due for review in light of new scientific data and feedback on the Aubrey 2050 uh, Communities Strategic Plan uh, that indicates that our community wants a target and councils help to reach it. A climate action plan will formalise the current and future work of council that relates to climate action, giving guidance on how agreed and community aspirations, uh, how agreed targets and community aspirations can be achieved. It's time to be a leading community and name the emergency. It's important to call it what it is, an emergency and act accordingly. We've received a letter of endorsement of this motion from the Aubrey Youth Council, and we heard from our very own energetic youth Mayor Carpenter, um, who represent the generation who will be most impacted by climate change and the decisions of governments today, including this one. We need to have the courage to listen to our community, our young people, and follow the lead of many other councils who have also recognised a climate emergency and have taken corresponding action. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Speaking for the motion, Councillor Baker. Thanks very much, Mayor King. I would just like to also uh, agree with the recommendation. I think it's been really well thought out and put together. It's incumbent on us as councillors to lead the way for the community. There's been a bottom up um, grassroots push for climate action for a long time. I think a, a lot of governments have been very slow to act and it's really important that we hook into this right now and lead the way and hopefully maybe across the border something like this will happen as well and for our children and their children the world needs to take urgent action thank you thank you councillor baker any speakers against another speaker for councillor thurley uh, thank you, Mayor King. I'm really pleased to speak in favour of this. Um, the previous council moved a motion. We didn't use the words climate emergency. Um, we wanted to, but we didn't feel it would get the support at the time. But now we're in that position where we all know the evidence is overwhelming. Uh, I thank Mr Key for his um, passionate um, presentation tonight. I don't want to go on too much about this because I do believe the evidence is very clear. We have um, tropical diseases moving south. Mosquito-borne diseases were never heard of in Albury, and they're coming here because of rainfall and temperature patterns. We have the highest ever temperatures recorded in the Arctic and the Antarctic. And as everyone knows, we have floods and fires all across Australia. So if now is not the time to do something, I don't know when it will be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Another speaker for Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to thank Mr Keyes and the Youth Mayor, uh, Mr Carpenter, uh, for their presentations and I wanted Mr Keyes to know that I'm happy to support the war on climate change, as he put it. Uh, climate action is a priority and we've seen firsthand how extreme weather events have affected many Australians with flooding and bushfires devastating communities. If you haven't been affected directly 
We all know someone who has. I'm proud to support the many voices declaring a climate emergency in the LGA of Albury and further highlight Albury as a leading community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. We also have another speaker for Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. I speak um, significantly for uh, this motion uh, and I wish to raise a couple of areas um, with reference uh, to the motion we have before us uh, by highlighting uh, the significant action that our community has taken over a number of decades towards um, mitigating against a warming uh, climate, as we call it, or the climate emergency, reducing carbon footprint. Uh, and the council has taken significant steps towards this also largely because many of the things that have been undertaken uh, make good economic sense as well. The work that has um, been done by council over a number of fronts, including um, one of our uh, leading lights, and that is the uh, Aubrey Waste Facility, um, working in partnership with the community and our regional community uh, to bring significant reductions in greenhouse uh, gas emissions. Uh, as part of uh, our response as a community. We have an opportunity to work with our community, the residents, as well as business and industry to further enhance uh, the success that we have already made. I'm somewhat uh, disappointed, but I don't know how we achieve it, uh, that we are not able to reflect that uh, more uh, in this motion uh, that we have before us. Um, recognition of the work to date uh, is an important part of, of what we should be uh, as a council, uh, ensuring our community uh, understands and is made uh, aware of. We want, I want our community to know of the success we've had uh, and how they can work as either individual residents or community residents uh, and business and industry to help us continue to make the significant differences uh, that we have already made. And that is also working in partnership with state and federal government. I, however, have an issue with the reference or the reference to uh, emergency. It is imperative that we continue to take this action, but I do not believe it's an emergency. It's my understanding that uh, reference to a changing climate has been part of the science uh, taught at universities uh, for decades. It's my understanding also that the uh, UK Prime Minister in the 90s made reference to climate change. It is, however, unfortunate uh, that it has taken some time for our communities and industry uh, to be able to, as well as government, to be able to make as meaningful a change as they have uh, been able to move towards in the last decade. We haven't yet turned that corner uh, to make it uh, a change for our community uh, and the world uh, that will mean uh, that the changes that have we, we've experienced to date will be stopped uh, and indeed, hopefully, reversed. I'm disappointed, uh, well, I'm not disappointed. I am uh, sorry that uh, we have to uh, appear uh, to be portraying this tonight as a climate emergency because it detracts from the good work that our community has done. And I think we need to emphasise the praise uh, that our community deserves for working with us as they have and indeed championing uh, the opportunities that we have into the future. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Uh, oh, yes, we do have another speaker for Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King, and uh, through you, uh, I'd just like to mention that I believe that, uh, that it is a, an ongoing uh, recommendation. It is an ongoing accreditation of what Aubrey City has already done. So I believe that the declaring that climate emergency is just another path to show how important it is in everything that we do uh, and to continue on that path. And after coming back from the local government conference, 
uh, to talk and to quote the words that were said there, that if someone is talking to you about and doesn't understand or isn't ready for uh, the climate change or doesn't believe in it today, it's time to tell them to get out of the way so that we can get things done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Councillors, if there's no more uh, questions or debate, Councillor Edwards, do you wish to close debate? Uh, yes, please, Mackie. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Glacken for highlighting those past achievements and future opportunities. Um, I believe that the spirit of B um, is to acknowledge that, that great um, past work. Um, and I'm sure that a whole list of those items, which are too long for here, um, could be included in somewhere in the sustainability framework um, that's yet to be prepared. Um, our community deserves a commitment to action on an issue that's recently been identified as one of the top issues of concern for our community. If we act now, we can tell our children that we were part of the solution, not the problem, and that this council played an important leadership role in helping our community move towards the new normal of a carbon zero future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item CM10, presentations and deputations. CM10.1, the Youth Council annual update for 2021. Members of the Youth Council, Eli Davin and Colby Baines are going to make a presentation for us. Thank you. Well, good evening, councillors, and thank you very much, Mayor King. My name is Corey Baines, and I'm here tonight as the former Deputy Youth Mayor during this 2021-2022 reporting period, and as uh, current youth councillor on the Aubrey City Youth Council. I'd like to begin tonight, of course, by acknowledging the Radjuri people who are the traditional custodians of land and pay my respects to elders past, present and future. The Aurora City Youth Council is an advisory committee aimed at providing a platform for representatives aged 12 to 24 years to raise the profile of young people in Aubrey and advocate for key local issues. Um, youth councillors can nominate uh, for any of the four positions available um, at the beginning of each youth council term. Uh, each role is a voluntary position that is performed as per the Aubrey Council terms of reference. Uh, those positions are the following, uh, youth mayor, deputy youth mayor, secretary and finance officer. And I'd just like to take a moment to again acknowledge uh, Lockie, who's uh, taken over the reins as youth mayor uh, and uh, thank Colby for his work as deputy for the last couple of years. Um, at the second meeting of the Youth Council, uh, an election for these positions uh, is held. Uh, the new Youth Council last week elected Lockie uh, and Isaac Street uh, as his deputy um, and Grace Alexander as the finance officer. Uh, I congratulate the new Youth Council leadership team. I know they'll do a great job uh, working with you. This council, of course, is a recognised stakeholder in many council projects and master plans and is a key point of reference for many community uh, services and organisations. Um, we'll, we'll go over the, the consultations and projects that we've worked on for the last 12 months. Um, beginning with the mountain biking strategy, we uh, provided insight into the needs and key areas and reviewed the final document, highlighting the need for um, uh, mountain, mountain biking uh, resources in North Aubrey and Springdale Heights. Uh, we uh, were consulted on the uh, Aubrey 2050 community strategy and we offered feedback on the goals and an application uh, of the strategy. Uh, the Disability Inclusion Action Plan uh, received initial consultation and the new plan uh, was presented to us. Uh, the Cultural Precinct Master Plan, uh, we contributed to the design of a better Aubrey CBD. And I must say I'm very excited for when that is completed in the next uh, few years. Uh, and then the Aubrey Regional Skate Park, we reviewed the original plans and provide feedback for that. Uh, and I think that most councillors can appreciate what a resource that has been for young people in the community um, of late. 
as said, another major aspect of um, the Youth Council's involvement in the community um, is involvement with community organisations and uh, those uh, other agencies in our community. Um, past projects over the past two years, um, as well as during this reporting period, uh, included the New South Wales Graffiti Removal Day, um, where we were inv invited to promote a cleaner city through the annual initiative. Um, this was also reflected in the uh, last year's graffiti management pl um, action plan, which was passed by council um, to cover the next um, few years up until 2026. Uh, we were also involved in the Reconnecting Rivers program under the Department of Environment and Planning. Uh, this involved um, participation in ongoing consultations for the program. Uh, the ICYP strategic plan, um, which um, informed the New South Wales advocate on topics of interest for young people in the Albury region. Uh, this is an annual um, invitation for youth councils all over New South Wales um, to participate in a networking event, um, as well as the Youth Advisory Committee, which is um, in a way a form of a state youth council, uh, which reports directly to the Minister for Youth. Uh, the Winter Solstice, um, which is headed by um, fellow councillor uh, Stuart Baker and his wife. Um, uh, we are a, a continuing supporter of the event um, and we have assisted uh, last year and in the past with fundraising and on the nights with event delivery. Uh, the Copper Project, which is a unofficial term uh, for this particular um, initiative, uh, every year we volunteer time uh, to raise money um, for a community organisation, which is uh, to represent um, understanding the different and changing needs that um, go beyond um, the, the annual budget um, that council offers. Uh, we are also a part of the Sustainability Festival, which is a part of the um, annual Youth Week. Uh, which we assist in the community's team with a youth-oriented event during the festival. We are also continuing to develop a proactive and relevant approach towards bettering the city for all young people. Um, I really want to touch on um, the 2021 Youth Survey, um, which I think Lockie referenced as well. Uh, we surveyed over 800 young people in the community. Uh, and uh, some of the key issues that were highlighted, the exact statistics will be released shortly. Um, but mental health and wellbeing uh, was a key, as well as inclusion, employment and safety, uh, transport, youth opportunities uh, and the environment was key as well. And I'm uh, really glad that Council's made a, a bold decision tonight to um, declare a climate emergency. Um, of the 800 respondents, uh, they attended various secondary schools in the area, lived in various suburbs uh, and surrounding regions. Uh, in addition to the youth survey, the Aubrey Youth Council in 2021 uh, conducted the 2021 uh, Youth Forum. Um, so in November of last year, 60 young people attended a virtual forum uh, due to COVID restrictions uh, to discuss topics identified in the youth survey and to create possible actions for the future. Each topic was opened with a local community leader or community service to prompt discussions around each topic. The actions and full result, results from the survey will be included, as Eli mentioned, in the upcoming Aubrey Young People Strategy for 2021 to 2026, which will be submitted for council for review and hopefully to pass. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Any questions, councillors? Thank you very much, Mr. Davin and Mr. Baines, and of course, um, Mr. Davin in particular for your um, great effort in passing on the reins and, and that contribution has been wonderful. So that was um, a great presentation um, about your annual update. So thank you very much. We move on to item 11, reports or minutes of committees and working parties. So CM 11.1, .1, minutes of the audit risk and improvement committee meeting held on Wednesday, the 16th of February, 2022. Councillor Glacken. 
Thank you through you to move the recommendation as a motion that council receives notes and accepts the minutes recommendations of the audit risk and improvement committee meeting held on Wednesday, 16 February, 2022. Thank you. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion making. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to that no, at all? Thank you. Happy to put the motion if there are no questions or debate. Oh, there is a question or debate, sorry. Those for, <laughs> those against, motion is carried. Thank you. Item CM 11.2, minutes of the Sports Albury Advisory Committee meeting held on Wednesday, 16th of February, 2022. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Meeking. That the council receives notes and accepts the minutes recommendations of the Sports Albury Advisory Committee meeting, which was held on Wednesday, the 16th of February, 2022. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Meeking. Councillor Callaghan, do you wish to speak to the motion? I do, Meeking. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge Hank Venevan's contribution to the Sports Advisory Committee over the past 15 plus years. It's, it's been hard to determine how long he was actually there, but it's quite some time. Um, and the ongoing commitment to sporting in Albury and to the Albury Wodonga region. So thank you to Hank. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Does anyone have any questions or debate or wish to speak to that? If not, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item CM 11.3 minutes of the local traffic committee meeting held on Thursday, the 3rd of March, 2022. Councillor Glacken. Thank you. Through you to move the recommendations, the motion that council receives notes and accepts the minutes recommendations of the local traffic committee meeting held on Thursday, 3 March, 2022. Councillors, do we have a second? Uh, Councillor Thurley. Second the motion making. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? Thank you. No. No questions or debate. Councillors, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM12 documents for sealing. 12.1 documents for sealing. Councillor Glacken. Thank you. Through you to move the recommendation as a motion. That council authorises its seal to be affixed to the document outlined below in the presence of two signatories authorised to affix the seal pursuant to Regulation 400 of the Local Government General Regulation 2005 and the Council Seal of Management and Legal Documents and Advice Procedure uh, A, Low Cost Loans Initiative, LCLI, funding agreement for Thaguna Walinga Growth Precinct between Albury City Council and the uh, LCLI an Administrator for and on behalf of the Crown uh, in right, in right, Crown in right of the state uh, of New South Wales, file number 21 slash 01892. Councillor Betteridge. Happy to second making. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? Thank you. No. In that case, if there's no more questions or debate, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you. Item CM13, officers' reports for consideration. Item 13.1, Heritage Review, Heritage Working Group, Councillor Nominee. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council A endorse the Community Heritage Working Group terms of reference and B appoints Councillors Bowen and Thurley to, as representatives to participate in the Community Heritage Working Group. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to second that motion. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? Uh, just briefly, I mean, I think it is an, a very important group that's been set up. We've in the past faced heritage issues in this council and there's no doubt that they will continue. We have a number of um, significant heritage items in this community and we need to look at how we keep them and how we integrate them into the rest of the community, given that the community is changing quite significantly. So I think this is a great opportunity and it's great to have a working party. And I'm very happy to be a member of that group. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillors, any questions or debate? If not, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, Councillors. 
Item 13.2, Draft Bota Botanic Gardens Master Plan. Councillor Callaghan. Uh, I move that the council receives and endorses the draft Aubrey Botanic Gardens concept drawing and accompanying the draft Aubrey Botanic Gardens master plan. And B places the draft Aubrey Botanic Gardens concept drawing and accompanying draft Aubrey Botanic Gardens master plan on public exhibition for a minimum of 28 days and C, if no submissions are received through the public exhibition process, then the Botanic Gardens master plan be adopted as the final version. Councillor Betteridge. Happy to second, ma'am. Councillor Callaghan, do you wish to open debate? I do, thank you. Um, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Andrea Proctor Landscapes for the beautiful design and master plan, which is well considered. The Indigenous planting in the heart of the garden addresses what the community are wanting. The planning literally thinks outside of the square, encompassing cafes on the boundary and linking the gardens to Monument Hill. And I'd like to endorse the motion. Thank you, Megan. Thank you very much. A speaker for Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Making. Um, I'm really ple pleased to see that the rewilding of Bon Gamberwatha Creek is part of this master plan, which is so important for biodiversity and flood and climate change mitigation. However, I do look forward to hearing what the community has to say about the proposed angle parking over the creek on the Dean Street side of the gardens, given that it will potentially add more hot, hard services to the area and limit future opportunities for planting and expansion of the gardens. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Glacken. Uh, I was going to speak for, but noting the uh, list of speakers for, I decided I would ask a question instead, if I may, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, so through you to the most relevant member of staff, um, and I preface this with information from the report, and that is that, uh, and it's already been raised by um, one of the councillors uh, speaking for this motion, with reference to the um, carrying of or um, the enlargement of the um, botanic gardens with a view to uh, um, taking it up to the monument. So increasing that space and, and that connectivity. Um, it's with reference in particular to the garden that we have below World War II, the World War II bowl, which I believe is called the Indigenous Garden. Um, and I note the uh, intention in the, um, uh, in the master plan to have uh, an Indigenous component of plantings within the actual Botanic Gardens precinct, can we somehow uh, align development with that, uh, with the in existing Indigenous gardens uh, just below World War II Bowl? I, in as much as I would find it disappointing if we developed a new garden but did not maintain our existing garden. Mr. Costello. Thanks very much for the question, Councillor Clacken, and, and through you, Mayor King. Um, absolutely, a great point around the Indigenous garden at the top. Um, probably the key difference is, is that what's being proposed within the gardens uh, is more around a, a botanical assemblage, um, whereas the Indigenous garden um, up uh, at uh, around the World War II um, Memorial Bowl there uh, is actually our locally Indigenous flora only, whereas the, the uh, what's proposed for the gardens would be more a floristic uh, botanical representation of, of a whole range of native plants, whereas the, the plants up on, the, up on the hill are uh, locally native plants Indigenous to the, the area. May I have a follow-up? Uh, thank you for, uh, to the staff uh, for the explanation. Uh, can I ask that they take um, my uh, next question as a comment, um, but it is a question. <laughs> is it possible for us to ensure that development on the existing Indigenous garden just below World War II Bowl uh, is included in further planning uh, as we move forward with regards to the, or with reference to the master plan for the Botanic Gardens, because it meets very neatly with the top of the new plan, um, which is partway down Monument Hill. Thank you. Councillor, Mr. Costello. Thanks again for the for the question and comment, uh, Councillor Glacken, and through you, Mayor King. Uh, absolutely happy to take that on board, um, noting, noting that uh, and the opportunities there. The next stage in that extension of the um, 
uh, of the plantings up through the annex would definitely require some detailed design and obviously a logical consideration would be the, the consideration of that Indigenous garden bed and, and how it relates to the, um, the, the native um, plants that are being proposed for the centrepiece of the garden. So happy to absolutely incorporate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken and Mr Costello. Councillors, any further debate? Any speakers for or against? In that case, Councillor Callahan, do you wish to close debate? I do, thank you, Mayor King. I just wanted to highlight um, that the Botanical Gardens is a well-loved part of the city and I believe that the master plan enhances that and I look forward to hearing what the community's views are um, moving forward with this in the future. Thank you, thank Councillor you. Callahan. If we're happy to put the motion, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item 13.3, Sustainability Advisory Committee Membership. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council A invite seven community members plus one youth council representative to join the Sustainability Advisory Committee. Proposed members are Albury Conservation Company Executive Officer, Claire Greenhaug, Jonathan Howard, Grace King, Stuart Lucas, Libby Rouse, Natasha Stafford and Youth Council Representative to be appointed by the Youth Council. And B endorses the updated Sustainability Advisory Committee term of reference, including updates to membership in term of office. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion making. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I've had the pleasure of working on this committee for quite some time and working with um, a number of people, including Councillor Edwards, uh, as a community representative on that committee. <coughs> when I look at what we've got, we've got some continuing members here and we've got some new members. And it's a hard working and very, very valuable um, committee. Um, and given a motion tonight about um, climate change, the importance of the SAC becomes even more uh, pointed. So I think we've got a great opportunity here to move forward. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Does anyone wish to speak for or against, or does anyone have a question? If not, Councillor Thurley, do you wish to I speak any further? Happy to put the motion, those for? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 13.4, Human Resources Information System, HRIS, contract number 21-01950. Councillor Glacken. Thank you. I'll need a glass of water at the end of it, but I, through you, to move the recommendation is a motion that council uh, declines to accept all tenders pursuant to Regulation 1781B of the Local Government General Regulation 2005. B authorises the CEO under Council's Delegation of Authority and Regulation 1783E of the Local Government General Regulation 2005 uh, the ability to enter into contract negotiations with Evolutionary Systems Proprietary Limited and agree alternate uh, terms, alternative terms and conditions in relation to contract number 2101950, supply and implementation of an HR, sorry, human resource information system. Thank you. For the purpose of, purposes of regulation 1784A and the regulations, uh, council's reason for declining to invite fresh tenders uh, are as a result of proprietary software hosting and commercial licensing arrangements tendered and the specialised nature of IT procurement uh, contracts, uh, IT as in information technology, procurement contracts that differ to council standard terms and conditions of contract and D, for the purpose of regulation 1784B of the regulations, council's reason for determining to enter into negotiations with evolutionary systems prior to limited are as a result of the evolutionary systems strong performance in the demonstration phase of the tender process, demonstrated past performance and alignment with their product offering uh, with the information management systems uh, needs of council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Councillor Callahan. Happy to second the motion making. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a critical uh, piece of infrastructure for Albury City Council uh, in as much as, as a standalone item, 
uh, human resource management systems are critical. Uh, the criticality uh, that we then gain from uh, that fact is, is that it needs to um, uh, speak, int uh, integrate uh, and work with all of the other systems and, and processes that we have at Albury City Council as well. The level of uh, technical uh, intricacy is therefore um, significantly uh, increased. The demand on this system uh, is significantly increased when you have to align it with the other systems and processes that we have. Uh, however, uh, putting it very mildly, it is important that we ensure that we have good uh, HR equipment uh, and facilities. Uh, and to this end, it is a computer system that we need. Um, and I, at the appropriate opportunity, will have a question to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any speakers for or against or a question? Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Through you to the most relevant member of staff uh, who may not be an HR person. Um, my question is with reference uh, to the uh, information systems that we are already running um, that sit within the Civica uh, component. Now, my understanding is that we have recently updated some information management systems with, um, that have a particular um, uh, role in the finance area and that the, and I would like to ask the staff um, how that implementation of the updated or new uh, product within finance uh, has gone, um, noting that it too needed to integrate with other um, facilities and uh, products within Albury City Council. Thank you, Mr. Finlayson. Yeah, through you, Mayor Kim. Thanks for the question. Yes, we have gone uh, and updated our our general ledger within the finance system of Civica Authority. Um, we went live after significant planning in July last calendar year. Um, since then, we've been further embedding that that new system and chart of accounts. It is enabling improvements such as our improved financial monitoring reporting using other systems. And we are looking to also integrate that with the proposed human resources information system. I hope that answers the question. Uh, someone, if I can have a follow up, please. Um, my follow up question is um, in light of the fact that we've had significant changes in the implementation or the introduction of this uh, product for finance, which I know has um, uh, had teething problems because of the reporting um, through to Albury, uh, through the, to the ARIC. Um, how, what lessons have been learnt with that implementation and how will we ensure that the HR uh, application or uh, implementation uh, will not have the same problems that we've had? Uh, thank you, through you, making. Um, yes, there definitely have been some lessons learned, which um, through our project planning and our approach to project management, we're building into our future system improvement projects. Uh, so some of those are around um, uh, project resourcing and, and planning. Um, and I know, for example, there, there's a strong project focus around the human resources information system and the um, focus on system integration, which will be key. Thank you, Mr. Finlayson. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Uh, speaker four, Councillor Callahan. Thank you, Mayor King. Um, I would just like to speak for it. I think um, the system will only enhance the ability to monitor and build a happy and healthy culture here at Albury City Council. So I fully endorse it. Thank you. Councillor Glacken, if there are no more questions or debate, do you wish to close? Uh, to close debate, thank you. Um, I, I think this is a, a critical piece of uh, infrastructure uh, and we need to ensure that this um, dovetails uh, with all the other components uh, in uh, IT related uh, aspects of, of councils monitoring and, and, and management systems, uh, the information systems that we have within council. Uh, it's imperative that we get this right uh, and that it uh, works well with all of the other components uh, to ensure that we have a sound and robust system. Um, part of the uh, 
being a member of the ARIC, I'm very conscious of uh, risk and uh, in making sure that we have this uh, embedded, we get the right pro uh, product and that we embed it properly within our uh, existing systems and processes uh, is imperative uh, because otherwise we risk, uh, the risks are uh, certainly not worth imagining. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item 13.5, draft revised Albury City Code of Meeting Practice. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I'd like to move a, a slightly different motion. Uh, I'd like to move that Council A endorses the revised draft Aubrey Code, Aubrey City Code of Meeting Practice and publicly exhibits the draft for a period of 21, 28 days, except that 3.34 now reads, pre-meeting briefing sessions are open to the public unless the matter being discussed is confidential. Full stop, pre-meeting briefing sessions should generally not be held in the council chamber unless technically necessary. And B, adopts the draft Albury City Code of Meeting practice in the event that no submissions are received during the public exhibition period. Councillor Thurley. Second the motion, Mickey. Councillor Cameron, do you wish to speak to the motion? I'll reserve my right to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, speaker for Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Mayor King, and thank you for the uh, amended uh, motion, Councillor Cameron. Um, this group has identified openness, transparency and accountability as values that are collectively important to us. We've seen the negative reaction uh, of our neighbours across the river when their council recently moved to closed briefings. Open meetings give our community confidence in our decisions and show them that we have nothing to hide. I believe the current practice of scheduling closed workshops for some issues that do require in-depth discussion are valuable and should continue where appropriate. However, I do not believe that closing all all pre-briefing uh, meeting sessions to the public is in the best interest of our residents, nor is it in the spirit of openness, transparency and accountability, which is why I'm supporting um, this amended motion. Thank you. Speaker against, Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, and I foreshadow that should this motion uh, not uh, be resolved by Council, the motion on the board currently, uh, not be resolved by council this evening that I uh, foreshadowed the alternative uh, motion, uh, which would be to revert to the original motion uh, in our paperwork. Uh, the reason I uh, do not support this is because um, many organisations and, and boards publicly listed, hospital boards, schools, Australia Post, Telstra, uh, even the Australian Parliament do not have all of their meetings in public. Many meetings, uh, including the Australian Parliament, are held outside of the public gaze. The Australian Parliament, yes, uh, is broadcast when they have their parliamentary sitting sessions. You can go and attend. You can sit in the gallery. Uh, the broadcasts uh, for question time in New South Wales Parliament are on the radio and or on television. And it's very interesting to uh, watch them at times but not all of their meetings are held in public. Many briefing sessions are held as a closed session. The pre-briefing meeting sessions uh, are an information giving and a fact finding opportunity for us as councillors to work with staff and other uh, organisations, other presenters, to ensure that we have the best information at the time that we can then make our decisions. The information that we receive from our community uh, is part of the Aubrey 2030 and soon to be the Aubrey 2050. Actual decisions are still made in council meetings. We don't make decisions in the pre-briefing meeting sessions. We ask questions, we are provided with information. We can speak honestly, openly and frankly, frank with one another, we can ask the hard questions in those meetings. We can continue to speak openly, 
asking the hard questions, providing uh, our staff an opportunity uh, when we come to the actual council meetings uh, to listen to the questions we ask, provide us with further information. So we can again, make uh, ensure that we make the best decisions in those council meetings. I would prefer us to have more uh, community forums uh, on a regular basis for the community to be able to provide us with information uh, for, to assist us with taking the 2030 and soon to be the 2050 plans forward uh, for each of the uh, items that we, we're moving uh, at various stages, moving on with at various stages. Councillors are elected to make decisions. They're elected, we are elected by our community uh, to make those decisions and we do that in our council meetings. I cannot support the motion uh, that we have on the, on the board at the moment uh, as uh, moved by Councillor Cameron and seconded by Councillor Thurley because it does not uh, enable us as a group of councillors to meet and discuss uh, a num the items as we do with our staff um, in an honest, open and frank way. I cannot support it because it's not common practice. All organisations, even the Australian Parliament, have briefing sessions that are not in the public gaze. We are not unlike them. Why should we have all of our meetings open to the public? Thank you. A speaker for Councillor Thurley. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mayor King. Uh, we've been doing this for quite some time now and I've not seen any um, adverse uh, problems in the community. I'm a little bit um, surprised that anyone would um, hold up the Australian Parliament to me as an open and transparent um, group. Yes, they have debates that are open to the public, but we don't know what goes behind closed doors in cabinet meetings in all sorts of places. We have plenty of opportunities ourselves, amongst ourselves, to discuss confidential matters. I can send an email to every councillor that can remain confidential. I can have discussions after a meeting in the mayor's room with councillors. I can have numerous discussions. The public elected me to be a councillor and they deserve to know what I think about stuff. And not just what I say here, but what I say in briefing sessions and in other places. Um, uh, we've we've um, successfully been open to the public now for some time. I've not heard any negative feedback, but as soon as this got mentioned in Wodonga, the feedback was negative. And if you look in the board of mail, letters, comments, people are totally opposed to closed meetings. They want to know what we're doing, what we're saying. And so I totally support Councillor Cameron's motion. Uh, speaker against, Councillor Baker. Thank you, Mayor King. This is my second stint at council. The first one was back from 1999 until 2008. And in that time, each month, there was a monthly cycle, one council meeting at the end of the month, and sometimes a public forum where the community would come in and, and discuss things very openly. Uh, I've now been here for two and a half months. I have been attended all the pre-meeting briefing sessions. I found it to be like listening to speeches and there is not much good debate or discussion from councillors um, in that. And in fact, I found it quite underwhelming. And I think the fact that the council now meets twice a month anyway, and they are open to public and the debate is for everyone to listen to. I think if there's one or two other weeks when we all get together and we can ask better and more in-depth um, questions and have conversations around them, not this um, quite formal process, I think the residents of Albury will actually get better debate when it comes around to council meetings and also get better results. So I, I think it came about either in the last council or the council before when most no, I won't say most, but many of the councillors like to hear their own voice and they love the publicity, but I would personally prefer to chat about it and, and talk and ask in-depth questions to council officers and really listen to the answers. 
So I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Uh, speaker four, Councillor Betteridge. Thank you, through you, Mayor King. I like the concept that we as an organisation have meetings and discuss things openly. We ask hard questions. We're inquisitive. That's what we should be. That's what we're here for. And we're here because the ratepayers of Albury put us in this position. They should know what we think. They should know how we talk, how we interact with each other. I believe that this is an important issue. If after some of these workshops, et cetera, there are questions to be asked, they shall be asked and they'll be answered by the staff. Or if there is a plethora of questions that have not been answered in the public arena, I'm quite confident that a workshop could be organised where we could ask each other questions and find answers from find answers from staff members and be informed. And then we come into the chamber. Yes, we debate. We debate strongly and we debate robustly. But I do not believe the perception inside the community that we are having meetings that are not open and transparent is appropriate. I'll be supporting the motion put forward or the amended motion put forward by Councillor Cameron fully. I think it's very important. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Betteridge. Councillor Bowen speaking for. Thank you, Mayor King. Uh, I think uh, what is uh, needed in this scenario is that uh, the formality of the meeting of the pre-meeting briefings being in the council chambers itself is the thing that we really need to focus on is that it doesn't need to be as formal as it is in this. So uh, having the meeting, the pre-meeting briefings in the Robert Brown room or another appropriate room that can be live streamed to me uh, makes no difference uh, either way to me. But the fact of the matter is to actually have it so that it's not as formal, so that robust questions can be asked and can be uh, questioned rather than going through the mayor each time and waiting for the initial speaker to finish uh, to be able to ask questions uh, whilst the uh, whilst the topic is uh, is hot and happening is the key factor uh, really the uh, the recording of it really makes no difference to me either way so I'd be supporting that motion provided we can move those uh, move those uh, pre-meeting briefings out of the council chamber and into a more uh, a more inducive area to uh, have good robust discussion thank you Thank you, Councillor Bowen. A question, Councillor Callahan. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I have a question for Councillor Betteridge. Councillor Betteridge, are you suggesting that the pre-meeting briefings be open to the public, however, additional meetings be closed to the public for additional information? One moment, Councillor Betteridge. Through you, Mayor King. I was proposing that if we had workshops as we have pre-budget workshops, which we had one approximately a week ago. That's what I was referring to, where we sit and discuss pre-budget issues, et cetera. No, what we do is we have our pre-meeting briefing open to the public and we discuss openly and robustly what's going on. If then at the end of the pre-meeting briefing, I have questions, I can then check with the general manager and receive that feedback from the staff. Thank you, Councillor Betteridge. Councillors, if there's no more questions or debate, Councillor Cameron, do you wish to close debate? Thank you, Mayor King. Um, look, this motion is essentially uh, proposes to continue the existing practice. It's been the practice for some time now. I won't uh, seek to recast the comments of councillors have already spoken. What I will say is that many of us, and not just me, have been committed to a maximum amount of, amount of openness that can be possibly provided within the legal frameworks in New South Wales in local government. And I'm not the only one. And I happen to have with me a copy of the Stuart Baker How to Vote from the two and a half months ago. And wouldn't you know that the first dot point is, we will strive for community consultation and transparency on council decision-making. Now, it's sad to me that people will go to an election promising transparency and only after two and a half months will abandon that position, it would seem. And I urge the members of that team who were successful based on their promises. Point of order has been called, Councillor Cameron. Councillor Baker, do you wish to speak to your point of order? Yes, I'd love to speak to the point of order. This, this is not about um, not upholding promises or anything like that. This is a different way of discussing things and the fact that, well, I said it before, but for Councillor Cameron to just have a personal go at me is quite extraordinary and 
probably uh, what I would expect. Thank you. Councillor Cameron, could you please... Um... Uh, on the point of order, Madam Mayor. Yep. Madam Mayor, I submit that there is no point of order. That was a, simply a statement by Councillor Baker and it can, doesn't constitute a point of order. Do you wish to sum up, please? Certainly. As I was saying, I would urge the members of all teams who make promises at election time to honour those promises and to follow through. That, in terms of Councillor Glacken's well, comments... That, that, is, that, that has got nothing to do with promises and he, he needs to be stopped. <laughs> Thank you, um, Councillor Cameron. Would you please speak to uh, to the motion as it's presented that you've presented tonight, please, just to sum up um, without um, getting personal with um, naming certain councillors, please. I think that I think the councillor group would find that very helpful. Certainly, Madam Mayor. If, if, but I don't see that there's any point of order yet. But I'm happy to do that. The comments made by Councillor Glacken in terms of uh, the. the the, presumably the national and state parliaments where matters are often discussed in confidential uh, settings uh, are not at odds in any case with what our existing practice is and what indeed this motion expressly states that where matters need to be in confidential for legal reasons and within the framework of the Local Government Act, they would continue to be, be so as they are now. So I'm not sure what uh, the point that was being tried that Councillor Glacken was seeking to make, but nevertheless, I endorse uh, the existing practice of openness, transparency. If we need to hide things from the people who elect us, we need to stop and have a real good look at ourselves, I believe. There's no excuse for it, and it should only be done where it's legally necessary to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Noting that Councillor Betridge, who had advised at the start of the meeting that he would need to leave early, noting that Councillor Betridge is leaving the chamber. Item 13.6, the IVA Collection National Heritage Listing Investigation. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council receives and notes this report on the investigation into the nomination of the either subcollection for National Heritage Listing and does not progress the matter any further. Councillor Bowen. I'd like to uh, move that, uh, second that motion. Thank you, Mayor King. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, very briefly, um, and, and I'm uh, indebted to uh, my fellow Councillor, Councillor Edwards, for some uh, advice in this matter. Um, but I believe that um, National Heritage Listing uh, requires a particular place to be nominated. And I do not believe that the race course is an appropriate place uh, to nominate for National Heritage, whether or not that would make it possible. That's almost irrelevant to me. Um, the, the race course is Crown Land. It's operated by the racing club. We have no controls over it at all. So I don't believe that we should um, take this matter any further. What I'm saying, though, does not preclude at some stage the possibility of natural, national heritage um, listing, but I would leave that to people more expert in this field than me. Um, we have a fantastic collection. Uh, we have a dedicated group of people um, restoring a plane, uh, which is um, the same model as the Iver was. And we have a fantastic story. I would like to see that story told. We have a fantastic story being told at the airport. It would be wonderful at some stage if this plane could be brought into some special building at the airport, as we have seen at other airports around Australia, where it's the highlight of a particular part of the incoming and outgoing um, passenger uh, area. But in any case, uh, I just believe that now is not the time to go for National Heritage Listing on the basis that's been um, talked about here. Thanks for that. We did have a seconder, didn't we? So open it up to questions. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, through you to the most relevant member of staff. Uh, are staff uh, already considering 
um, the possibility of listing the race course, um, albeit uh, it's Crown land and we are not directly responsible for it. Um, are staff considering listing uh, the Albury race course on our local heritage list? Uh, Mr. Christie, <laughs> as he comes down to answer that question from Councillor Glacken, Mr. Christie. Uh, thanks for the question and for you, um, Mayor King. Uh, so as uh, noted earlier in the report tonight for the nomination for our Heritage Review Committee, so we are in the process of undertaking that initial review, hasn't obviously identified at this stage any items because just in initial processes, but that is one that either could be considered through the professional uh, assessment or could be nominated by members of our community as we seek our community's input into our review of, of our heritage listings. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there's no further debate, Councillor Thurley, do you wish to close? Happy to put the motion, those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item 13.7, the Mama Governance Transition. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council A endorses the draft lease, draft funding agreement, draft collection agreement for progression to the Mama Limited Board. B delegates final negotiation of the draft agreements to the Albury City CEO. C delegates authority to the Albury City CEO to activate the decision and implementation phase of Clause 41, Workplace Change. Uh, D endorses the financial assistance request for public exhibition per the budget process. E he authorised its seal to be affixed to the lease and any other documents relating to Mama Governance transition in the presence of two signatories authorised to affix the seal, pursuant to Regulation 400 of the Local Government General Regulation 2005 and Council's Associated Procedure. F affirms the Council representative for the Nominations Committee and Collection Committee in line with the Committees and Working Parties Register. And G notes that progression to Phase 2 will be subject to approval from the Minister for Local Government under Section 358 of the Local Government Act 1993 to participate in the formation of Mama Limited. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to second the motion. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Question up here, if you like. I'm happy. Oh, thank you. Councillor Cameron, there's a question. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Mayor King. Um, so at the beginning of the uh, term, we were discussing matters around this, and I asked a question at that time about uh, staff entitlements, or it may have been during a briefing session. I'm sure there's a, a record of it in the public domain if it was at a briefing session. Um, I'm curious about the arrangements that will be in place for uh, staff members who may transfer over to this new structure. Uh, can anyone in the staff elucidate me as to what the answer to that question is? Ms. Coe? Thank you for the question and through you, Mayor King. Um, in terms of staff, so our staff who are employed through the Local Government Award will be transferred over through a copied certified instrument to the Fair Work um, Act. They will not be losing any entitlements. They will not be any worse off. Um, all of their leave, all of the other entitlements will be transferred across to Mama Limited if they choose to take employment with Mama Limited. Councillor Cameron has a follow-up question. Um, thank you, Mayor King, and through you to the, to the CEO. Um, I note in that answer that there will be a change of uh, jurisdiction from the State Industrial Relations System to the Federal Fair Work Act regime. Um, I would ask, has discussions and consultation taken place with the United Services Union over this, pro over this proposal? And is there agreement from the United Services Union that this should occur? Mr. CEO. Thank, thanks for the question through you, Mayor King. Yes, that uh, consultation's underway, uh, both through our local com community uh, uh, consultative committee, employee consultative committee, and directly with the, um, with the affected unions. Thank you very much, um, councillors. So, sorry, sorry, if I went, I may just one Follow up, yep. More thing. So it's underway, but it's not completed. That's correct. We're waiting, obviously, on this council's determination this evening. 
and then two other factors, um, um, approval of the uh, Department of Local Government to the creation of Mama Limited, which will then trigger the formal, formal advice and negotiations. But we're having discussions, consultation at an early stage to assist with making that process uh, fairly seamless. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, any further questions or debate? Councillor Thurley, do you wish to close debate? Oh, sorry, Councillor Baker has... Sorry, Councillor Baker. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I would like to speak for the recommendation and also note that the provisional chair is in the, the chamber. And um, I think this is a, a great plan moving forward for Mama. And I think it gives it its best chance to thrive. And it, uh, I take what the report said in that it, it, it probably had reached a plateau. Well, I didn't say it like that, but I think it had. And I, I think this is a great opportunity to move it forward and make it more vibrant and more important to the city. Thank you, Councillor Baker. If there are no more questions or debate, Councillor Thurley, do you wish to close debate? It's been a bit of a drawn out process, but apparently the minister, when he finally gets her auditor's statements, is happy to sign things. So I uh, assume from Mr Clancy that that will be happening uh, quite soon and the minister will therefore almost automatically give his approval. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Now, councillors, noting that F, item F on that motion, um, does require us to have a nomination, a councillor be nominated uh, on this. So do we have a nomination from a councillor who might like to be on the nominations committee and collection committee in line with the committees and working parties register? Councillor Thurley? Um, we didn't do that in our workshops doing that? Uh, just uh, through the CEO. I think, thanks for the question, Councillor Thurley, through you, Mayor King. So the, um, the current nominees are under the, the current... Um, committee structure that you're referring to. Um, so Council Betridge is the representative at present. Uh, so we just need a, a nomination, Council Betridge or, or one other councillor to, um, to nominate for the, the newly, uh, what will be the newly constituted um, nominations committee and collection committee uh, for, you, for you this evening to wrap this um, package of transition up this evening. Uh, quick question, Councillor Bowen. I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Betridge for that position. Councillor Glacken. Uh, happy to second the affirmation of Councillor Betridge as the continuing representative for the nomination. Yeah. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Callaghan has a question. I would also like to nominate as a representative. Wonderful. For the we have two representatives, <laughs> councillors. Hang on, I'll just, uh, Mr. CEO. So, if you're happy, just from a procedural perspective, if, if Councillor Betridge is the is the representative and Council Callahan the substitute representative, if that assists the process through Madam Mayor. Councillors, we're happy to assist that process. Councillor Bowen. Uh, sorry, just I understand that uh, Councillor Betridge might not want that new position, so I uh, just uh, thought I'd uh, mention that. So in that case, in the absence of Councillor Betteridge, we do have Councillor Callaghan. Is that correct? Councillor Callaghan has a question. Thank you, Mayor King. I discussed this with uh, Councillor Betteridge. He wrote, brought it to my attention earlier this evening and I was happy to nominate on as well. So Terrific. thank you. Terrific. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. <laughs> oh, Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you. Can we confirm then that perhaps Councillor Betteridge would be the uh, substitute alternative should the need arise. Is that the case? I have not had that conversation with Councillor Betteridge, uh, but it appears uh, Councillor Callaghan has had such a conversation. I think that, is that correct, yes. Councillor Callaghan? Yes. You, yep. Thank you, Councillor Glaffin. Yes, that is the case. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Bowen. And that being said, I'd like to second Councillor Callaghan, if I may, for that position. Thank you. Terrific. Uh, we're all in agreement, Councillor Callaghan, with uh, Councillor Betteridge as the substitute. Thank you, councillors. Those in 
those for that adaption, <laughs> those against, the motion is carried. Thank you. We're up to item 13.8, Albury City Media Policy Review. Would the councillor like to move this? Councillor Glatham. Thank you. Through you, um, Mayor King, to move the recommendation as a motion that Council A receives and notes the changes to the draft 2022 uh, Albury City Media Policy and B adopts the draft 2022 uh, Albury City Media Policy. Do we have a second, councillors? We have a question. Do we have a seconder? <laughs> Councillor Callahan. Happy to second the motion. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the media policy review? Uh, thank you. Very briefly, uh, this is a, a critical piece of uh, policy for us as councillors uh, because uh, it ensures that we as councillors as well as our staff um, are able to um, work with our community uh, yeah. and in particular um, various components of, of media to ensure that we have a fantastic message to give to our community, a very positive message, uh, and that there are many, many uh, participants in being able to provide that message relevant uh, and informative to our community so that they understand and appreciate uh, the work that is being undertaken by us as councillors and staff and that collegial um, uh, way uh, in which we go about our business in a very positive, uh, proactive um, and supportive way also. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any comments or debate or questions, councillors? Do you wish to close debate, Councillor Glacken? No? Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item 13.9, Aquatics Strategy Update. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to move an alternative motion. Just wait for Councillor Edwards' oh. motion. Is that correct to yep. come up? There it is. Thank you. I move that Council A increases utilisation of the existing aquatic facilities by one, extending the 2021 22 swim season to 8th of May 2022 at Albury Swim Centre, and two, investigating and providing a further report to Council on the feasibility of year round operation of the Albury Swim Centre commencing 2023 including negotiating in principle contract arrangements with the Lion Leisure. B, upgrades and or develops Albury's aquatic facilities by continuing with the planned implementation of the aquatic strategy, including one, process design of the like-for-like -like replacement to current and best practice standards of the Lavington Swim Centre in 2023-24, and two, continue to allocate funding in 2024-25 to master plan the upgrade of the Albury Swim Centre until the outcome of further related investigations are complete. And C, broadens the scope of the, that's the Lauren Jackson Sports Centre <laughs> feasibility study to include both stadium sports and a regional indoor aquatic facility. And the amendment is with the addition of D, undertakes a comprehensive review of the aquatic strategy on completion of the Thaguna Wollinga Structure Plan and Thaguna Open Space Strategy. Councillor Callaghan. Oh, I will second the motion. Thank you, Mayor King. Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, please, Mayor King. Albury-Wodonga's combined population is around 100,000 people or 180,000 regionally. We currently have three outdoor pools and one indoor pool. Bendigo, with a similar regional population, has a splash park, seven outdoor pools and an indoor regional aquatic facility. Therefore, it's not so unreasonable to expect council pools at Lavington, Albury and an indoor aquatic facility, with the addition of a Thaguna pool in the near future, to ensure that all of our communities have equitable access to pools and their benefits. The costs associated with this may be significant, however, community priorities need to be council priorities. You cannot put a price on the benefits of pools to the community when outcomes include physical and mental health, play, water safety, and an increased sense of community and social capital. I maintain that community pools such as Lavington are not regional aquatic facilities and shouldn't come at the cost of one. So I'm glad to see this reflected in the staff recommendation. The data says that the main users of pools are families. 
Families in and around Lavington would be the most impacted by the closure of their nearest pool. These families would need to absorb the increasing costs of driving if they had access to a car to a pool further away. And I probably don't need to go on about the state of public transport in this city, particularly on the weekend as raised earlier by Mr. Barber. This motion is the best way to meet the needs of our, the current needs of our community. And as amended, will also give confidence to the community that council is committed to the long-term provision of services to Thaguna and will ensure that the strategy continues to best meet the needs of the whole community. The existing strategy will be well and truly due for review following the completion of these strategic planning documents and council will be well placed to do so with all the relevant and up-to-date strategic planning information at hand. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Edwards. A speaker for Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. Uh, the process for investigation and of aquatic strategy commenced in 2015 with 749 submissions for have you say, an additional nine written submissions, three community information sessions, a petition and a recommendation from the Aquatics Facilities Advisory Committee to proceed. The best strategy was identified to develop a new regional aquatic centre at the Lauren Jackson Centre. Fast forward seven years, we are having the same conversations. With a rural inland water strategy devised to promote water safety and a community who wants a regional aquatics facility, it's time we listened. I agree with Mr. Boyd Barber that the city has changed and we should adjust. A new aquatics facility is more than just a pool. I'm happy to go back to the drawing board and I don't mind the location, but Aubrey should not wait another seven years to act. And again, it's time we listen to our community. Thank you. Speaker for Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you through you, uh, Mayor King, and you have a speaker against. I'm happy to wait if you like. All right, we'll reserve your speak for. We'll go to thank speaker. You. Speaker against. Ooh. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Mayor King. Um, I'm happy with the bulk of this motion, but the, the idea of opening up the running wound of the prospect of an in, internal uh, swim centre based at Lauren Jackson Centre, I just don't see the sense of putting a community through that again. The price of such a facility with the recent very significant increases in capital costs and construction costs is bound to be more than $60 million. And you, with today, the state government is foreshadowing that they're going to put on the back burner and delay several major construction projects themselves, infrastructure projects in Sydney, because of the huge increase in the recent last couple of years in civil construction costs. The idea that this city can bear the cost of an indoor aquatic centre is, is fanciful and dangerous. And while I support most of this motion, the idea, and, and if I'm quoting uh, Councillor Edwards correctly, I believe she said, we simply can't put a price on things that are so important to the community. Well, we must, we must put a price on things. That's one of our core functions is to manage this city's finances responsibly. And as we've seen with the announcement with the regional deal from the federal government, the federal government does not consider an indoor aquatic centre as something that they're liable to make a priority for funding. It's time to face reality and stop pretending that it's a majority of Albury citizens who want this thing and that this city can afford it. Thank you. Speaker for Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you, through you, and thank you for um, putting me back into the uh, sequence. Um, I truly believe that our community deserves a, an all year round aquatics facility uh, that encompasses therapeutic, competitive, exercise, recreational and educational water. And it goes, sorry, Councillor Callaghan, well before uh, the investigations have been going on well before 2015. That was the then most recent uh, of a number of reports. Uh, and I truly believe that our community by and large, and we will never get 100% satisfaction with anything. Um, if we are waiting for 100% satisfaction, um, then I think we could uh, consider that we will never achieve anything. But I truly believe that our community will support us and is supporting us for such a facility that meets such a broad area of needs. 
And I also believe that there is funding out there, state and federal funding. I uh, think the uh, option of extending uh, the swim, swim time uh, into uh, well into the autumn period uh, is a good opportunity this year for us to be able to do that, to see what that interest is, because it may satisfy some need. Not everyone wants to swim indoors. I believe that progressing uh, the uh, research into um, being able to co-locate the uh, existing and what will be enhanced facilities at the Lauren Jackson Sports Centre with uh, an aquatics facility offer a good opportunity for us to ensure that we have as much as possible economies of scale. I do believe, and, and it's interesting that uh, Thaguna has been added uh, uh, and the Thaguna Master Plan has been added uh, to this uh, tonight, not necessarily the way I, I would have liked it to be done, um, but it is interesting because ultimately that is our growth corridor. And at some stage, we will need an Olympic style uh, swimming pool in that uh, region. Uh, I, however, would not want us to delay any work towards the aquatics facility um, by uh, adding this additional requirement at this stage. I believe at some stage we will need further aquatics facilities, uh, but I do not believe we should delay the existing um, work or the work that's proposed and is by and large the significant part of this motion, and that is uh, the um, aquatics facility, the all year round aquatics facility. I think to that end uh, that while we're developing further plans uh, towards this, should this motion be passed, that we should indeed be proactively working with state and federal government uh, to find uh, ways in which we, can, we, would, we would be able uh, to fund uh, this facility. Because without that funding through the state and federal government, uh, in conjunction with funding that we as a community would need to provide, uh, we will not be able to achieve this outcome. I, uh, like Councillor Callaghan, do not want any further delays to this. It is a significant period of time that we have been delaying this situation. And uh, regretfully, um, we have spent many years discussing, debating, uh, and our community has told us many times that this is the type of facility encompassing all of those areas of, of water use uh, that they want us to uh, bring to fruition. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Clark. And Councillor Edwards, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I do, Mayor King. Through you to the relevant member of staff, I just had a question around finances as raised by Councillor Cameron. Um, could we just get a quick on-the-spot comment from staff about whether Council can indeed in afford a $60 million or thereabouts indoor aquatic facility? Uh, Mr CEO. Thanks for the question. So can't provide you with a definitive answer other than to say we've still got to do the feasibility. And there are two costs involved. There's the capital of expense of constructing whatever that facility might be or look like. And then secondly, operating costs year on year, depreciation and the like. So that's, that'll be all part of the feasibility work that's proposed. Thank you. Happy follow-up question. Follow up question. Um, so just confirming that those decisions will come back to council. Mr. C. Absolutely, they're definite their decisions for council. Another question, Councillor Callahan. Thank you, Mayor King. And I don't want to detract from the aquatic centre and the importance of it, but I have a question for the most relevant staff member. What was the cost of the Lavington Sports Centre? And can we put a cost on that, please? Mr. Glass, do you have those details? Uh, stage one and stage two, I think 19.7 million. And then uh, there's a further uh, stage three, $800,000 for this year. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker four, Councillor mm -hmm. Baker. Thank you, Mayor King. I'm very pleased that the this um, subject has come up tonight in open council where we've got a good chance to discuss it. We did discuss it previously briefly in a briefing session. But firstly, could I say the 
extending of the swim season to the 8th of May is a really, really positive thing. Uh, it's only two weeks, but it, it's a nice gesture to the people that use the facilities daily for their health and well-being, and it, it, it's a very, very good thing. Um, I'm glad we're also looking at exploring keeping our existing facilities open all year, which won't be happening this winter, but it's also on the agenda, and, and that's also a good thing to look at. Uh, positive ways to, you know, absolutely utilise our assets. With regards to the Lauren Jackson Centre and an all round aquatic facility, it's well past its time. I was extremely disappointed um, with the last council decision in 2017 to abandon what the consultant said and also the recommendation from council. And even more um, upset in a way because I was in the gallery that there was no debate, there was no transparency, there was a mayoral minute and it just got squashed and five years later we're back at exactly the same spot and I, I think the long suffering public of Albury and even Wodonga, this is, we're talking about a regional facility here, um, deserve something better and most other communities with even 50,000 people in their region have an all year round uh, aquatic facility better than what we're even proposing. And the other thing about cost, it's not going to be a cost to Albury City. Any project like this would attract federal and state funding. And if it didn't, the project would just not proceed. As a councillor, I would not be voting to spend 60 million of our rate money for a regional aquatic facility unless there's suitable, um, you know, um, agreements with state and federal governments. It just would not proceed. So it, it's a furphy that it's going to cost the ratepayers of Albury 60 million. It's just not right and it's incorrect. So I'll be supporting uh, this motion and it really has a bit each way on every topic. It's talking about in-depth um, design for Lavington, the existing one. It's also talking about doing up Albury Swim Centre. And it's also sensibly talking about an all year round regional facility at Lauren Jackson Stadium. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Councillor Cameron has a question. Thank you, Mayor King, through you to the most appropriate member of staff. Um, my question is in two parts. The regional, the regional deal I note from the media has been announced by the federal government, uh, I think yesterday or the day before. I've been in isolation, so I might be a little out in my timeline. I take it from that that the contents of the regional deal are not therefore confidential. Uh, if they're not confidential, as I suppose, could staff please indicate, is it the correct that a regional indoor aquatic center was proposed as one of the proposals for the regional deal? And what was the result of that proposition? Mr. CEO. Yeah, thanks for the question through you, Mayor King. So Albury City uh, made a bid for development of a regional aquatic facility that was um, supported and endorsed by the, the council of the day. Um, and that, uh, that proposal went forward under the, uh, the Cities of Sport um, component of the, um, of the regional deal reference group discussions. Um, and when uh, feasibility was undertaken by, uh, by independent parties, um, the regional aquatic facility uh, was lower on the list as a priority from a feasibility perspective than other initiatives that, um, that have been announced or will be announced in the near future. Um, so at this stage, not certainly not part of the um, the announcements that are to be made um, under the regional deal banner, at least. Um, but um, depending on the council's decision, we will certainly be looking for, you know, what other funding opportunities there are, um, if that's uh, council's uh, um, resolution to to move forward with um, initial feasibility, at least to understand what the funding climate might be. Um, for the feasibility to be developed and reported back to council. Follow up, Councillor Cameron, were you happy with that? 
Uh, question, Councillor Baker. Sorry, Mayor King, no longer have a question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Any more question or questions or debate, councillors? Councillor Bowen. Uh, just a comment, if I may. I think that uh, it's worthwhile going forward to uh, to look forward to this motion. And as uh, Councillor Baker said, if there's no opportunity for federal or state funding that we would uh, put it on hold, but at least get it ready so that we can continue to uh, to advocate for uh, for federal and state funding so that we have planned ready to go and shovel ready uh, when we do get that funding going forward and continue to ask as we can. Thank you, councillors. If there's no further questions or debate, Councillor Edwards, do you wish to close debate? Uh, yes, please, making. Um, just a couple of comments, I suppose. Um, the first being that, as um, the CEO noted, that the funding climate you know, can change and it may well do in the very near future. And I don't think that because there's been a decision in the, in the regional deal that, that that indicates whether um, a regional aquatics facility may or may not be funded um, by governments in the future. Um, and the second point I wanted to make was that I don't envisage um, that my amended point there about uh, the review of the strategy will delay the work um, to progress the aquatic facility at Lauren Jackson, um, and that it can it can happen um, at the same time or alongside, and will actually help inform sort of future um, decisions. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Happy to put the motion. Those for. Those against. The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item 13.10, Draft Community Strategic Plan, Aubrey 2050. Councillor Glacken. Thank you, uh, Mayor King. Uh, I have great pleasure in moving the recommendation uh, as a motion that Council A receives and notes the Draft Community Strategic Plan, Aubrey 2050, and the Community Engagement Report. Uh, and B, endorses public exhibition of the Draft Community Strategic Plan, Aubrey 2050. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion making. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? Thank you, and thank you, uh, Councillor Edwards. Um, I'm delighted uh, to be able to move this recommendation as a motion tonight because I uh, think so very highly of uh, the Aubrey 2030 plan, the way in which it was crafted, um, and over the years, that has been our uh, guide as council, not just councillors, but our staff, as to the way forward in which our community wanted us to go. Our community was the driving force behind the Albury 2030. That is now becoming the Albury 2050. And there is not a week goes by when I do not raise the Albury 2030 in my conversation uh, with people either uh, with direct reference to council or within the community. And there will not be a week that goes by in the future where I will not raise uh, the plan of Aubrey 2050 uh, in my conversation. Um, I'm delighted uh, that uh, to read in the report as we have before us um, on page 122, uh, the uh, quotation uh, in, in the addition of the word diverse, a nationally significant regional city that is vibrant, diverse, innovative, connected and inspired by its culture, environment and location on the Murray River. Um, and for those of you with e eagle eyes will have noticed uh, that the word diverse was missing from some of our uh, documentation in the report uh, that was attached uh, to this report. Um, I... Uh, remember well uh, during our 2004-2005 uh, council period when we were creating uh, the Aubrey 2030 with our community uh, and one of the significant factors uh, that was raised by our community was that they didn't want us uh, to have our back turned towards the river. They wanted us to celebrate the river and look at the amazing work that we as a community have undertaken uh, along the river enhancing um, making sure or ensuring uh, that we utilise all of those natural resources uh, to its best for our community, uh, including uh, the encouragement of people coming to visit 
uh, our community. The Wagira Trail and the significant work along there. Um, the works that we're undertaking at the moment in front of, interestingly enough, uh, the Albury Swim Centre, uh, the boardwalk area, uh, that area that will in enable our community to again interface, interact uh, with the Murray River uh, even more significantly. There are a number of pillars within the 2050 plan as there were within the 2030 plan. Environment is a strong part of that uh, and encourages us to work with our, continue to work with our community. The amazing work that we've done out at the Aubrey Waste Facility is in large due to the work uh, that was undertaken as part of the 2030 plan. Uh, I really look forward to a final outcome with the 2050 uh, in so much as the plan uh, being agreed uh, with our community because there is no, never any final outcome uh, with the plan as we go forward because that plan uh, lives, breathes uh, and is modified, uh, adapts as we move uh, towards uh, what will be uh, our goal of 2050 and creating a community, uh, a city, an environment, uh, a future for our community uh, that our community shares uh, and is responsible uh, equally with us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any debate or questions, speakers for or against Councillor Edwards? Uh, thank you, May King. Um, I think Councillor Glacken wins the prize for most excited about Aubrey 2050, but I share some of that excitement. Um, I'll be in my 60s in, in 2050, um, so I guess I'm pretty invested in this, um, this strategic plan. Uh, I think it is looking really good. Oh, I do have um, one comment for staff, and that would be, can we please acknowledge the, um, the artist in the, in the Indigenous artwork below the acknowledgement of country, please? Thank you. Any further debate or questions, councillors? Councillor Glacken, do you wish to close debate? Uh, thank you. Part of my excitement uh, is because it is a document that is, or Aubrey 2050 will be, as the Aubrey 2030 was, the guiding document for our community. Uh, it's our community telling us uh, what they envisage, uh, their dream, their aspirations, uh, for 2050 and beyond. And I remember uh, when we first started and Councillor Baker was part of this project, uh, the Aubrey 2030, um, when we were discussing uh, what, what our community wanted, what we uh, wanted collectively for Aubrey 2030, we were trying to think up a name. Um, and I actually wanted to call it 2100 and beyond uh, because it was not about us, uh, whilst some of us uh, will be 60 in, or 60s uh, in 2050, um, it, it's not about us. It's about our children's children's children that we're really doing this for. This is long-sighted vision. This is uh, important work that we need to ensure that we undertake or commence now uh, for the benefit of the generations to come. It's not our generation and it's not my children's generation. It's further than that, that we will really reap the benefits uh, for all of these uh, decisions that we make, just as uh, we as a community benefit uh, from our forefathers uh, who decided that we would have an airport uh, back in, I think it was about the 40s, that we would have an airport. Uh, there was one uh, councillor uh, on the council at that stage, they were called aldermen. There was one councillor at that stage who said that an Albury airport would be a white elephant. Thank goodness we have an airport uh, in our region. Uh, and I'm proud to say that the Albury 2050 will enable us to have similar like opportunities well into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Item CM14, officers reports for noting CM 14.1, applying the principles of water sensitive urban design, WSUD, to future urban subdivisions in the Albury local government area, response to notice of motion. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council receives and notes the contents of this report, providing an overview of how water sensitive urban design is incorporated into the consideration of development applications. Councillor Glacken. I'm very happy to second that. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to uh, the motion? 
just very briefly, it is a, um, a response to a motion that I moved some time ago. Um, we, councils for many years treated stormwater as something you had to get rid of as quickly as possible. And to my knowledge, it's still a bit like that. Um, but I welcome this report because it does show that our planning people, our engineering people are thinking at how we can, we get stormwater at Faguna. Do we have to pipe it all the way to the Murray River? Or are there things we can do with it on the way? Can we water wetlands? Can we provide habitat for Sloan's froglets? Can we water street trees? So this report, I think, is a brilliant report. And I commend the council staff uh, to keep on looking at every opportunity for um, water sensitive urban design. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Any uh, speakers for or against or questions? Councillor Thurley, do you wish to sum no, up thank at you, all? Mayor King. In that case, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item 14.2, Regional Curbside Waste Collection Contract Update. Councillor Glacken. Uh, thank you through you to move the recommendation as a motion that council receives and notes the update of the future Regional Curbside Waste Collection Contract. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. Happy to second the motion. Councillor Glacken, do you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, because this is one of the areas that I get very excited about. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, this is one of those fabulous areas that uh, really came very much from the Aubrey 2030 plan uh, and Council's desire to undertake um, what our community told us was important, and that's the environment. Uh, but it was also an opportunity uh, to be efficient and effective uh, and therefore uh, save money for our community, as well as uh, extending the life of our waste facility. Uh, so there were many functions uh, and many aspects to uh, what we now know as the uh, Regional Curbside Waste Collection Contract. We have one at the moment. It's been extremely successful, has enabled us to achieve a significant number of outcomes. Uh, we have extended the life of our current waste facility significantly. I think it was this year or next that our waste facility would otherwise have uh, been required to close. Uh, thankfully, that is not the case uh, because I believe, or as I understand it, the uh, New South Wales government would not allow us to have a new waste facility. What would we be doing with our waste uh, if that was the case? Uh, this is an enhanced uh, opportunity uh, for us as a regional community, uh, which in, in, in essence will provide greater efficiencies, effectiveness and better outcomes for our community. Uh, we have a number of uh, councils and shires in our region that participate in the existing uh, program. Uh, this program will be enlarged. We're uh, looking at uh, involvement from another, a number of other uh, or additional uh, councils and shires within our region. Uh, it enables us to uh, progress further um, uh, opportunities uh, in our region with reference to the circular economy uh, and recycling opportunities. Uh, it's one of the growing areas uh, that we have around the world um, for business, but it's also absolutely a growing area uh, for us here uh, in the region of Albury Wodonga. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Any speakers for or against or questions? Councillor Glacken, do you wish to close debate? Thank you. No. Happy to put the motion in that case. Those for? Those against, the motion is carried. Item 14.3, investment balances, February 2022. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move the council receives and notes investment balances report for the month of February 2022. Councillor Bowen. Second that, mo that motion, Mayor King. Councillor Thurley. Do you wish to speak um, to another one of their routine matters. I think it shows we're in um, pretty good shape, so I don't want to go on about it. Does any other councillor want to enter debate or have a question? If not, Councillor Thurley, do you wish to close? We're happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Item 14.4 Disclosures by Councillors of Interest within three months of the new term of office. Councillor Glacken. 
Uh, thank you through you to move the recommendation the motion that council receives and notes the report concerning the council's disclosures of interest returns exhibit a uh, the folder on the desk for us below the set hand sanitizer thank you councillor thurley second the motion making councillor glacken do you wish to speak to the motion uh, uh, no that would be fine it's an administrative matter but there is a question Sorry, Councillor Cameron, you have a question. Thank you, Mayor King. Through you to the most appropriate member of staff, can staff rule out categorically that the pecuniary interest returns have no linkage to the 20, Albury 2035 or Albury 2050 plans? Mr. CEO. Thanks for the question through you, Mayor King. Yes, that's the case, Councillor King. Happy to follow up, Councillor Cameron. I'm not sure which Councillor King your fruit in slip <laughs> refers to, but I'm Councillor Cameron. Thank you. I should. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Uh, any further questions or debate? If not, um, Councillor Glacken, do you wish to close? Very briefly. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm. I'm a little baffled as to why there might be uh, some relationship with the Aubrey 2030 to 2050, other than the fact that um, uh, Councillor Cameron is making reference to myself. Um, that being the case, um, perhaps that can be clarified after the meeting. Um, other than that, it's an administrative uh, matter uh, and is part of the local government uh, legislation for New South Wales. Thank you. In that case, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against. Motion is carried. Thank you, Councillor. CM 14.5, Youth Council Annual Update for 2021. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move the Council receives and notes the Youth Council's achievements as outlined in the Youth Council PowerPoint presentation. Councillor Bowen. I'd like to uh, second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to oh, the motion? No, I really just commend the council and the youth council on the work they do. Um, I've um, sat in briefly on two of their meetings so far. Um, as you all know, I've got a, a bit of a connection with them now. Um, but, yeah, you know, they do a great job and uh, I really appreciate the presentation they gave us tonight. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Speaking uh, for Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Mayor King. Um, I'd like to congratulate the outgoing uh, Youth Council, including our previous um, Youth Mayor, Eli, who is here with us tonight. And I really look forward to the work of the, the new Council. Um, and it was great to hear from the, the new Youth Mayor earlier this evening. Thank you. Another speaker for Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. Um, probably reiterating what was already said, but um, I want to um, congratulate um, Eli for the hard work he's done over the course of his role as Youth Mayor and I look forward to working with the new Youth Mayor and um, the committee as well closely. I think it's really important to be listening to our youth and what their needs are um, and thank you for also highlighting that youth mental health and wellbeing, inclusion, employment, safety and transport and youth opportunities are at the forefront and you know I look forward to exploring that uh, with you guys in the future. So congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, uh, Mayor King. I'd also like to congratulate the uh, to the uh, Youth Council and uh, excited that there's a new excitable uh, Youth Mayor Carpenter as well on board uh, to uh, to re-energise and keep things flowing. So great job and well done. Look forward to uh, working with you guys going forward. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to close debate? Happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Item 15, delegates reports for noting. There are none. Item 16, notice of urgent business. There is no urgent business. Item 17, confidential matters. There are no confidential matters. In that case, I'm happy to declare the meeting close at 8.13. Thank you, councillors.
Okay. 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 Okay.